Hey guys, it's Chuck from Brady Adventures, and in this episode of our dual battery install, we are going to be installing the National Luna dual battery monitor. So check it out. Hey guys, real quick, I wanted to let you know why we chose the National Luna battery monitor. In the US, there are very few options to choose from. In a lot of cases, you have to have two separate monitors, and a lot of them are actual number readouts. Um, what I really, really like about this is the LED levels are really easy to glance at and let you know how each battery is performing, whether they're linked together or not, and at what charge they're at. And that was really desirable to us. I'm gonna mount my National Luna battery monitor right here. Considered a couple other places, but this is out of the way and easy to look at if you need to. And yeah, I hope I'm happy with that. If not, I'll have to move it. We just took the wire up underneath the trim piece and you can see on our in cab switch video how we routed that through the dash. We use Velcro to actually attach the monitor itself. The next thing I'm gonna do is to take this wire from the National Luna battery monitor and hook it up to the auxiliary battery and I'm gonna have to splice in some additional wire and run that around to the primary. Um, not quite enough to get there. Um, I've got some additional braided sheathing that I'm gonna put on wire that's going around this way. So we're gonna make that happen right now. The National Luna instructions call for a fuse. Got these little fuse holders here. Picked up a couple of these from my local hardware store and I'm gonna put like a one or a two amp fuse in there. Got a connector here. It's gonna go right onto the battery terminal. I'm gonna splice this into the National Luna wire. I'm going to shrink wrap everything, and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. The big trick to all this is getting the sheathing on before you crimp anything and making sure you're not missing anything. And the sheathing is gonna keep moisture out of there and keep that copper clean and keep all the connections working right. Um, I need to get a piece of sheathing that's gonna go over all of this, over, this wire that's gonna go across here. It's another one where you gotta play in really good. I've got a couple that are gonna go over these connectors here. And then I have the larger one and that's gonna slide over both of these and this and this and this blue sheathing. So this has to cover all of this mess. The battery monitor requires a fused positive lead and a negative lead to each of the batteries. Right now, I'm crimping all the wires together and getting shrink wrap over it to protect it from the elements. All right, everything's all wired up. I'm gonna pop a fuse in here and we should hear some beeping. I don't know if you can hear that or not. And that should be one turn it on. I have no idea how dead the batteries are. I haven't started the truck for days. Still need to zip tie this, but I'm gonna wait until I put the uh, one gauge wire in. All right, so let's see, we're gonna put this in. Let's see if we hear a beep. Didn't hear a beep on that one. That worries me. I need it. So I'll put it on resistance. And the first thing I'm gonna check is, shoot. Well, I guess the only thing I can check real easily is to see if uh, this guy is making it to this guy. That is very, very lucky. So, oh my goodness, that is so lucky. So this is saying I've got full resistance from the fuse to here. So that means my problem is somewhere in between here and here which that's an easy problem to solve, as opposed to in here, which is all done. I'm gonna back this back off and try again here. So it's generally gonna be a good idea to check each of your connections and make sure they're holding up um, as you go. I got lucky, but if, um, if it had been something deeper, I would have had to redone all of this on this end. Um, and it would have been a whole lot smarter just to test each connection as I crimp them on. All right, so rewired. Hope for a beat. That sounds good. All right, let's go take a look. Looks like battery two is 100%, which makes a lot of sense because it has not had any load on it and the other one's down a little bit to about 70% or so, and that makes a lot of sense too. 
um, because I haven't ran the vehicle in a few days and it's super, super cold. And in the lights and the interior on, I've had the doors open. So I'm gonna go ahead and, um, for days, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a charger on the, uh, the main battery here. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. And always feel free to leave us any comments or questions that you might have.